We are only a couple weeks away from Pentecost, so I'm going to read today from the book of Acts, the first five verses. So listen for the word of the Lord. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he pre presented himself after his suffering by many proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The word of the Lord. First, a very short story. A disciple once went to his master and complained. You tell us stories, but you never tell us the meaning. Said the master, how would you like it if someone offered you fruit? But before they gave it to you, they chewed it up. A way of saying that no one can find our meaning for us but ourselves, not even the Master. You know, Jesus' disciples never really seemed to get it. They followed him around, they watched him work miracles, they watched him interact with people, they listened to his stories, and yet they seemed to be in a near constant state of confusion, or even sometimes got his meaning completely wrong. Although he told them ahead of time it was going to happen, when Jesus was crucified, they thought all was lost. They immediately started to leave Jerusalem, they went into hiding, they denied, they even knew him. And then, miraculously and mysteriously, he began to appear alive to them. First to Mary Magdalene, oddly enough, and then to a few disciples, and then to more, and then to more, and then Paul tells us 500 people saw him alive, irrefutable proof. Aristotle uses the same term in his rhetoric, irrefutable proof that Jesus was alive. And Luke gives us a full account of this in his first book, which is the Gospel of Luke. And here in Acts, in these, actually in the first chapter, he gives us a summary of these, and we're going to look at the just first five verses. Um, he reiterates what has happened in Jesus' life, and then he goes on to list Jesus' instructions, which he gives before he is taken up. He says, stay in Jerusalem and wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What is happening here? Jesus prepares his disciples for the next stage of their journey. He will be leaving, and we know especially that he will be gone for a very long time. And the disciples will have to continue without him in this parenthesis, so to speak, between resurrection and return. And they are promised that they will receive the same power which drove Jesus, which gave him his strength, which gave him his faith, this divine power of the Holy Spirit 
will come upon them. And they will be able to do the same things that he did. Jesus called them to teach them his ways, to show them his ways, and for a time to be their way. And now they will go on their way, baptized by the Holy Spirit, to live and act as Jesus taught. They will experience Jesus in this way. They will experience the risen Christ and his way by living it. The focus here shifts from knowledge, knowing about, they knew full well what Jesus had done, and it will shift from this knowledge, knowing about, to mission, to living the same way Jesus lived. It will move from having watched Jesus reach out and touch the untouchable to reaching out and touching them themselves. It will mean giving up of their ego, emptying themselves so that they can be for others. It is very much as God emptied God's self to become Jesus of Nazareth. Now they will empty themselves to become Jesus, the living Christ. As we read this, as we meditate on this, a couple questions you might want to think about. What is our role? What is your role as witness, as teacher of Jesus' ways, as a disciple? I'd like to note here that Jesus never, in the Gospels, walked up to someone and said, are you saved? As so much of past evangelism seemed to emphasize. Rather, people came to Jesus because of who he was. And what does this say for our own evangelism in our troubled time? And we might ask, to what extent are we led by the Spirit? We might ask, to what extent do we seek the leading of the Spirit in every aspect of our life? In summary, the disciples are called to wait for the filling of the Holy Spirit so that they can live the way Jesus taught them. Let us pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.